like to thank uh, the organizers uh, for uh, the invitation and for uh, organizing the conference. Um, do not hesitate to interrupt me uh, at any time if uh, you have questions and also if you cannot hear me or see me or whatever. I cannot see you anymore, so <laughs> I'm a bit lost. Um, so I'll start now. Uh, so this is a joint work uh, with uh, Yves Lejean. I should uh, mention that. I will write it, write it here. Um, who is a professor in uh, Paris-Saclay University. Uh, and so our aim in, uh, this, uh, in this work is to study the genetic uh, composition of a population in which um, each individual has two parents, so in a population with sexual reproduction. Uh, maybe I can write it here because it's an important point. So the aim, you can, uh, you can say if uh, you cannot uh, see what I'm writing. So uh, the, the, the aim is to uh, study the genetics uh, in a population with sexual reproduction. Uh, So it is linked to uh, the previous uh, talk. And I have to, to precise that uh, there, there will be no mutation. Okay. And no selection. And in fact, so the, the only um, uh, thing that we, we will be interested in is to study the contribution of uh, all ancestors. There is a... A question or okay. Uh, so only the contribution of ancestors. So uh, our model will be a biparental Moran model. Uh, so uh, what is the, the, the feature of uh, this model? First, it is a discrete time model. And it's characterized by uh, a number of uh, a number a large n of individuals that will be constant. This is a very simple model that I will describe uh, in, with more details uh, now. So uh, at each time step, you choose three individuals, uh, three different individuals. Uh, uniformly at random. Uh, two of them will be uh, parents, and the other one will be the child. So, uh, what will uh, will uh, look like? So, let's, for example, consider that n, the number of individuals, is equal to five. So, and here will be time. Sorry. Time will go this way. So for instance, uh, at uh, the first generation, I choose uh, two parents, so let's say uh, these two ones, and one uh, position for a child. And what will happen is that um, at the next step, the population will be um, composed with uh, the same individuals than before except for the, the child that will be uh, replaced by a, um, a child of the two parents. So here, this individual, this individual will come from the two parents that I chose previously. I can do the same at each uh, time step. Sorry. So for instance, uh, here I choose uh, this uh, child, and the two parents will be these ones, and the other ones remain the same. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, like this. Okay. okay. Uh, so this forms uh, the, the graph that I uh, represented. Here I can put some arrows here. And then this uh, gives an, uh, a directed graph 
which is the set of ancestral lines that will be uh, the, the path uh, along which uh, the gene flow uh, will occur. So here I denote that J, J is uh, here the set of uh, the graph. You see, it's a direct, direct graph. Uh, and the gene flow will follow this graph. Uh, again, do not hesitate to, to ask if it's not clear. So uh, now our aim is uh, to uh, sample one gene uh, at a time n here, and to follow uh, its position backward in time to see where this gene comes from. So uh, as an example, here, let's say I start, uh, let's say here, just take the same example than in my notes. No, no, not possible. Okay, so I take uh, this one for instance. So uh, if I look at uh, the position of these genes, uh, this gene backward in time, uh, I take a gene in this individual, I look at its position, so in which ancestor uh, was this gene uh, uh, backwards in time, so necessarily it goes like this, here, here, and then uh, the, the gene necessarily came from one of the two parents, so I choose, choose, choose one of the two parents uh, uniformly at random, and I arrive here. So here, uh, in the end, the, the, object that, the, the object that we are looking at is uh, x k of n. It depends on n here because I, the, the gene that I sampled is in generation n. Uh, it's a random work. on uh, the pedigree, so the set of ancestral uh, lines that uh, I just uh, I drew, uh, drawn here, on the pedigree G. So now, what are we uh, looking at? So uh, this is the same uh, drawing here, or about the same. Uh, I start here uh, at some position uh, x0 of n and uh, look at the position of the gene backwards in time. So this is, the, again, uh, random work on the, the pedigree. So now what we are looking uh, at, the, the quantities that will be of interest, the first one is uh, a n of a, a, i, and j here, which is the probability that this random work arrives in position j here, so J will be a position uh, in uh, at generation zero, at time zero, knowing that at time N, it was in position I here. And knowing uh, the, the pedigree. Uh, maybe I can give an example here. So uh, here uh, you start with uh, this position I. So the probability that you end up in uh, the first one is zero because you cannot uh, go there. Uh, then here, I think it's one power, uh, then zero, um, just cheating a little bit, zero, zero. Here, you have three, four, and then zero, zero. So here, uh, this is the, the, these numbers here that I just uh, gave you, are the, the probability for each ancestor that your gene uh, came from uh, this, uh, this ancestor uh, n generations before. And it depends on uh, the, the pedigree, of course. So this can be defined as the genetic contribution of ancestor uh, J to uh, individual Uh, and now, in fact, uh, the, the individual that I uh, sampled here, uh, this individual I, is not that important to me. What is really important to me uh, are the, 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 the ancestors J. So uh, what is more natural is to sum over all uh, individuals that are taken at uh, present time and to consider the sum for all these, for all these individuals of this genetic composition. 
this genetic contribution, sorry. So here, this is the mn of j, which is so the sum of the n, a n i j, which can be also defined as n times the probability that uh, a gene came from uh, ancestor j, knowing that it was sampled uniformly in the population. So this can be defined as the genetic contribution or the genetic weight. So this is uh, how we call it in the in the title of the presentation. The genetic weight of ancestor J uh, in the to the in the population. Uh, in the population, uh, n time step later, maybe we can add this. And we will be interested in uh, considering this quantity uh, when uh, first when the time goes to infinity, and uh, then when uh, population size goes to infinity. So it will be first n goes to infinity. So this means that we will consider the asymptotic weights. And then we will make large n goes to infinity, which means that we will consider a large population. Uh, so there are uh, several articles dealing with this kind of questions. Uh, the two closest uh, articles are uh, an article by Chang and an article by Derrida uh, and co-authors. Uh, both of them consider the right Fisher model. Uh, Derrida and co-authors uh, look at the same thing as we do in the sense that we look, they look at the, the, the contributions or the genetic uh, weights asymptotic weights of ancestors, whereas the article by Chung focuses on uh, time scales. Uh, a third article that is more recent uh, is an article by Amory Lambert, uh, Veronica Miropina, and Emmanuel Scherzer, and they look at um, the, the genetic composition of a population under uh, recombination, so the impact of a combination on uh, genetic composition. Okay, so uh, our result is the following. So the first uh, part of the theorem is uh, that we prove that uh, the weight, so I recall that uh, a n of i j is the uh, contribution of ancestor j to individual i. We prove that this converges when a small n goes to infinity, so uh, when the, the time goes to infinity, towards a quantity a infinity of j, almost surely. So this means, in particular, that um, that the contribution, so the genetic weight of an ancestor, of an ancestor uh, is asymptotically the same in each individual. Um, be careful, this uh, here, this, uh, or maybe I can, yes, uh, this, asymptotic, uh, this asymptotic weight is a random variable because it depends on uh, the, the pedigree. It's a function of the pedigree, and the pedigree is uh, random. So uh, a direct uh, um, consequence of that is that uh, the genetic weight of an ancestor in the world population is uh, a convergence uh, towards uh, a quantity. And this is what we're going to study now. As I said just previously, m infinity of j is a random variable.
So uh, the second part of the theorem consists in uh, studying the, this uh, asymptotic weight of an ancestor uh, when the population is large enough. So what we prove is that if you take the asymptotic weight of L uh, ancestors, this is the asymptotic of L ancestors, you take any Ls, any L, then this, which is a random variable, as I said, because it depends on the pedigree, then this converges when the population size goes to infinity towards a, a set of uh, L variables. And we can, um, we have a, the, uh, an explicit law for uh, this, uh, this, um, these L variables. We have that these asymptotic weights here are independent, and they are either uh, equal to zero with probability one half, or uh, with probability one half, they follow an exponential law with parameter one half. So here, this means well, this uh, an, um, an interpretation of that, of that is that uh, an individual has a probability one half to have uh, an eternal descendants. And with probability one half, so, so, the descendants so will be will we end a question. Uh, infinite time. Yes. So uh, Vincent Calvet is speaking. Uh, hi. Yeah. Um, I have a question about the, ron the, 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 the randomness behind. So as I understand in the first part of the theorem, the, the graph or the pedigree is fixed once for all and you, you look back forward in time. Yes. But in the second part, it cannot be because the size is, is increasing, so it cannot be the same graph. So wh wh what does uh, capital N goes to infinity means in this second? Uh... So here, uh, this set here is a random variable. This is the, all the randomness comes from the graph. OK, so, so you, you have a huge graph. Uh, yes. Uh, and then you, you have subgraphs of time of uh, size N inside. And uh, um, to, to, to me, the, the graph is, uh, is depends on the size on the size of population. But maybe I'm, I'm yes, yes, but it's just a convergence in low. Okay, 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 okay. But yeah, yeah, no, the the graph changes uh, uh, at each time. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, so with probability uh, one half. Uh, the descendants uh, ends in finite time. So this means that uh, at some point uh, you you don't the, the individual does not contribute uh, to the population anymore in this model. Uh, maybe it's the oh yes I can make some comments here. Um, a first comment is that. Uh, for uh, the right Fisher model, I mentioned that uh, Derrida uh, studied uh, this uh, the same thing. Here they obtain, I think, that um, uh, a, a kind of similar law, but uh, uh, here the um, it was not one half, but uh, eighty percent. I think that's uh, that's in this uh, sense. Uh, but they cannot uh, ex give uh, an explicit law for the for the for the weight. Uh, okay, and I will comment more on about the the haploid case, the comparison with the haploid case, but uh, just after this. So uh, a, cor a corollary of uh, this uh, this result that we obtain is that if you uh, look at the weights of all ancestors this time. So not just a finite number of uh, weights. So this is this here. You look at all ancestors' weights. In increasing order. Sorry if you hear my uh, child uh, screaming. Um, so you look at all ancestors weights in increasing order, then uh, you will uh, assume, you will, uh, we will obtain that, um, uh, so I will just uh, make you uh, 
make a drawing here, you sort all weights and you look at this function. So the function will, is equal to, uh, so for one here, you look at the weight of the first ancestor, then the second, etc., and so on. Uh, then probably you will have a lot of zeros and then it will increase. Then you will obtain when n goes to infinity that this converges after uh, an appropriate scaling towards a function that is explicit, that is given here, that has an asymptote here. And which is simply uh, the, the inverse of uh, the cumulative distribution function of the law that uh, we were uh, that, that I mentioned, which is a variable which is equal to zero with probability one half, and uh, follows an exponential distribution with probability one half with a parameter one half with probability one half. Um, so you see here that. Uh, what we obtain, uh, an important corollary, an important remark that we can make here, is that um, this, the, com the genetic composition of the population will be very different in this uh, model with uh, two parents uh, at each uh, step than from the, for the haploid model, in which you will obtain that here, uh, the, the, the increasing ancestors' weights will be... Uh, uh, asymptotic ancestors' weight will be simply zero for uh, n minus one ancestor and ancestors and n for the, the for only one ancestor because you know that in the haploid model, let's say the Moran model or the Wright Fisher model, but uh, any uh, any um, haploid model, you will obtain that uh, at some point there is only one individual that is the ancestor of all individuals. Okay. And then uh, you will not have the same convergence uh, in this appropriate case. Uh, so this is the, the illustration uh, uh, for a simulation that we obtained. Uh, so uh, here on the left, you have that uh, n, the number of ancestors is equal to n, to, to 100, sorry. And here n is equal to uh, 10,000. Uh, I give... Uh, the, the uh, asymptotic, the, the, I, I take t, so the number of time steps, which is equal to uh, 100,000 in both cases. And, uh, but the, in fact, the, the, the shape of the function will not change anymore in both cases. Uh, here, the shape is uh, on the left, the, the shape of the function is not uh, exactly close to the, to the asymptotic function because the number of individuals is not very large. And if I uh, do another simulation, uh, I will uh, have another shape of the function. I have exactly the same for n is equal to 10,000, but uh, the, simply the, the, the function, it's also, also random, but we cannot see it. Uh, it's just closer to the, to the function that we expect. Okay, uh, so I don't have much time left, so I'll try to explain a little bit the, the, the proof of the theorem. So, um, so I recall that the aim is to prove, prove that uh, m uh, infinity of 1, m infinity of L, which are the asymptotic weights of uh, L ancestors, converges in low toward... Uh, uh, the set M of the variables M1, ML. So to prove that, so when large N goes to infinity, to prove that, we will consider the, the moments of uh, these uh, random variables and prove that they converge towards the moments of the, the, the limiting variables. Uh, the main object that we use that we need to use is a uh, k particle random work on G. Uh, so this means that uh, you take a particle, let's say here, and then it will go uh, this way, for instance. Here, you take a second one, uh, maybe here, you make it go here, 
and the third one, let, let's say here. And then, so they are independent. So here, when I for, for this green particle, it can go either uh, left or right uh, independently from the, the blue one. And you can have uh, something like this. And you look at the, the position of these uh, particles, these K particles here. The K is not uh, any, uh, any quantity. K is uh, the sum for I. Uh, going to from 1 to L of the Ki here, where the Ki are these quantities that uh, we want to do the, the power of the moments. Okay, for each and system. Uh, okay. Um, uh, an important, sorry. Uh, an important element of uh, the of the proof is that uh, here, so this uh, x n x n uh, uh, x one x k is the position of the k particles. Uh, it gives too much information. So in fact. In the second part, uh, what we want to do is to uh, only consider the, um, the number of particles in each occupied site. So we look at the projection of uh, our uh, Markov chain, uh, which is another Markov chain. Number of, part of uh, particles in each occupied site. Uh, so, for instance, if you have a position of uh, five particles that are uh, one, uh, one, two, one, uh, three, then the number of particles in each occupied site, you, you have three sites that are occupied. The first one is occupied three times, and the two other ones are occupied, um, are occupied um, only once. So, uh, this is a new uh, random work, a new uh, Markov chain, sorry. And this is uh, what we study uh, then, and uh, we can uh, uh, we can uh, make some deductions of of the first the Markov chain that is the Markov chain of interest from the second one. Uh, why is uh, you have a question? Why is this uh, second uh, Markov chain interesting? In fact, you have that uh, this second Markov chain. Uh, YK, okay. it belongs to some uh, space SK, and what does it look like? So, uh, what the first uh, state that uh, can be occupied is one, 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 in which case uh, all particles are in different uh, uh, positions. The second one is two, one. One. So here the length of the configuration is equal to uh, k. Here it is equal to k minus one. So the second state is uh, when uh, you have two particles in one site and the other particles are in different other sites. And then you have this one and this one, for which the length of the configuration is equal to k minus two, uh, and so on. Uh, in the bottom, you have uh, the configuration K in which all particles are in the same site. And the length of the configuration is equal to 1. Uh, why is it interesting to look at this? Uh, it's because, in fact, uh, you can look at the ascent the, 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 sorry, just, just lost in my notes. Yes, the the stationary uh, distribution. The stationary distribution of this Markov chain. Uh, it is equal. to uh, the sum of uh, all uh, 
spanning trees pointing at here any configuration X of the probability of this tree divided by the same thing, the sum of all uh, configuration of the same thing. And here, what happens basically is that if you take a spanning tree that goes, uh, that points towards any configuration X, uh, then this tree, if you want it to have a, a high probability, then it should look like this. So it should come from here, then go down, uh, downwards. You have one, one path that goes from 111 to X, and other um, uh, arrows will go upwards. So uh, you will have something like that. Uh, and then uh, using this, you can obtain that uh, nu n k of x, which is the stationary distribution of your Markov chain, uh, is equivalent to k of x divided by n to the power k. So this is uh, the 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 key, uh, the key part of uh, the proof. Uh, okay, and then uh, you just have to uh, look at the stationary equation for uh, the for the Markov chain. Um, let's say x or y, uh, it, it will be the same. So this is uh, the stationary equation uh, exactly, but I don't have. Uh, I won't uh, give you any detail here. Just uh, this part is when uh, the child is uh, in an unoccupied site. This second part is the is when the child is in an occupied site and what and the both parents are in one to L. And the second, the last part is when uh, the child is in an occupied site, but uh, you have one parent in one parent in one L, and the other one uh, not in one L. But all the particles uh, go to the to the first parent. And then you can just replace. Uh, so you have this equation, and you know that nu n k uh, of x. is equal to uh, k of x divided by n to the power k. And then you can replace uh, this, uh, this new equation in the stationary equation that I just gave. And this gives you a recursive equation for uh, k, which is written here. And you just have to, to, to check. Well, well, you can first prove that there is only uh, one solution up to a constant, and then prove that uh, the, the the solution that you have is indeed the solution. And that's it, I think. Yes. Thank you for your attention. So thanks for the talk. So are there any questions? Eline? Thank you for that. I just had a quick question, uh, if you can hear me. Um, uh, so I wanted to clarify one of the assumptions of the model that you mentioned at the beginning. So you mentioned that the parents and the child were different and distinct. Do you mean that they can be distinct or that they have to be? So is there selfing and can like the child replace one of the parents? Uh, so you we, you could have you could uh, assume that uh, the parents and the child are um, chosen uh, uniformly at random and do not um, uh, do not uh, impose that are, they are different. But it would be uh, as uh, when large n goes to infinity, uh, they will never be the same. This is the idea. But now, uh, if you want to add selfing, you can you can also. So this this will not be the same. You you, you will in that case you will. Uh, Assume that with some probability, uh, both parents are the same. And this probability will not uh, vanish when uh, population size goes to, infin go to infinity. 
Uh, and in that case, uh, then the, the results won't be the same. Uh, um, probably there should be, uh, I, I don't know that, uh, what would be the result, but you, you can do it and uh, there should be uh, also convergence, but the limiting law should not be the same. Okay, thank you. This is a, thank, thank you for the question. This is the kind of stuff that uh, we would like to, to look at. Okay, thank you for the talk, Camille. And uh, I was wondering uh, if it's possible to add selection in your model. Um, yes, I think so. Well, it's, it's possible to add selection to the model. The question is uh, whether uh, the... Wait, can you do something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with your um, with your... So we, di we did not look at it. Uh, uh, yes, I think we, we, we should obtain a, a convergence result. Uh, I don't know if it will be trivial or not. That's the question. Well, because w one possibility could be that uh, asymptotically, then on, uh, you have only uh, individuals with uh, the better genes that, uh, that are ancestors. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I have no idea of the results and I don't know. Uh, well, probability it will be, probably it will be hard to, to obtain the limiting law. Uh, here, the, 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 the fact that we have the exponential with, with parameter one half, uh, uh, we cannot retrieve that if, uh, we, we, if the model is even slightly different. So. Okay, thank you. And I had a, another question. Uh, can you use your method to to treat the right Fisher case, or is it completely different the method for the right Fisher case? Alors, uh, so uh, the for the Derrida, uh, they they don't have a proof for the right Fisher model. Uh, the 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 core of the, their arguments is that at uh, some point they assume that the asymptotic weights of ancestor are independent. So, whereas in our case, we prove that they are independent. Uh, no, the problem for here um, is that uh, your stationary equation for the right Fisher model will be very uh, uh, complicated. Okay. Uh, so, here uh, it looks like it's complicated, but it's not that, uh, that much. Uh, and also the other point is that uh, in our case, we could guess uh, the form of uh, the, the moments because we could guess uh, for a reason that I did not uh, have time to explain. I did not uh, took time to explain, take time to explain. Uh, so we could guess the, 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 for the limiting law. And for the right Fisher model, we, don't, we cannot do that. Okay. So here, uh, the, the uh, main, uh, main moment in the proof is that uh, we check that uh, our guess is the right one. Okay. Uh, so if we don't have a guess, we cannot make the proof. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Hi. So, so thank you very much for the for the for the talk. My question is about the. The limit, so you, you took first a very large time and then large size. Yeah. Is it possible yeah. to have an idea of how long it takes to reach the, the stationary distribution uh, to have a, a speed of convergence uh, so that you can, you can have a, like a yes. intermediate time and, 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 uh, uh, and corresponding size? Yes, we are looking at that uh, at the moment. And also in Chong, but it's for the right Fisher model, but I think we can do the same. Uh, they have um, some ideas of the time scales at which uh, some events occur. And the events that, they, that, he, that he looks at are uh, the first time at which you have uh, one ancestor uh, that uh, is common to everyone. Um, 
and uh, the, he also looks at uh, the time at which uh, each individual is either ancestor of everyone or ancestor of no one. And uh, so he has some time scales for uh, for um, for these these uh, some scales for these times. Uh, I think it's uh, in n log n or something like that. I'm not sure. Or maybe in our case it would be something like uh, n square log n. Or, but I don't have a, we can. I think we can do it, and we are looking at it uh, at the moment. If we we don't have a, a result for, for now. Thank you. Thank you.